Psalms chapter 80 to the chief musician upon Shin and Nem Edith, a psalm of Asaph. This psalm is another psalm of calamity. And I don't know, again, psalms is your hymnal inside your Bible, and I'm not really that type of person where the Bible says rejoice evermore to sing during your troubles. But this is an example that is set before us in the Holy Word of God. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. John chapter 10. Thou that leadest Joseph, the greatest type of Jesus Christ, like a flock. John chapter 10. Thou that dwellest between the cherubims. Well, that's the altar. That's the mercy seat that was on top of the Ark of the Covenant. You mean to tell me where God was on that mercy seat, Jesus Christ is? You want to tell that to any JW? Shine forth. So what's John 1 say? Light is Jesus Christ, capital L. The Bible speaks of Jesus Christ as being God, and God is Jesus Christ, and yeah, God is higher than Jesus, but they're the same. But it'd be a sin, and it'd be a lie, it'd be devilish and antichrist to say that Jesus Christ is not God. And anybody who's part, listen, a lot of supposedly Christians go running to the Jehovah Witnesses, and if that's, if that's what they pronounce, then they're wicked. And Paul says, no man but by the Spirit can, can confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. They don't confess that Jesus Christ is God and Lord. Before Ephraim, that's the son of Joseph. And Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and save us. So there's trouble between Joseph, Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. They're crying out to God for help. Again, this is a calamity. Psalm. Turn us again, O God, and cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Well, listen, God does not turn his face away from his people just because he's a wicked and evil God. He's our Father. There is a reason why God has left, has turned from Israel here. And the reason is because of man's sin, disobedience, and rebellion. They have turned from God from other gods. That is throughout the, the, the five books of Moses. That is throughout Joshua. It is throughout Judges. It, and even the book of Ruth, when there's a time of famine, instead of turning to God, they turn to Moab. And you want to see this over and over and over. You turn to the book of Judges and read how God turned away. And then they sought God when they were put into the affliction. Psalm 80 is, is, is a, a recap or a study of, of the book of Judges to be read with Psalm 80. O Lord God of hosts, hosts of everything, all the angels, of all the Christians today, of all the Jews that done right, how long wilt thou be angry against the prayer of thy people until you truly repent and get right? Until you get a Daniel prayer. That your heart is broken. That you acknowledge not only not only the sins of the people. Look at what they did. But my own personal sins. Thou feedest them with the bread of tears. That doesn't sound too tasty. God gave them manna. God gave them Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Here, they're given, here God is giving them, because of rebellion, tears of hardship, of pain, of sorrow, of loss. And gives them tears to drink in great measure. Well, Jesus Christ is the bread of life, and he's the water of life, according to John. 
Here is quite opposite. You know what the nation Israel has today? Tears and tears and tears and no hope. They rejected the Messiah. They rejected who God sent to them. They said, let, let his blood be upon us and our children. I bet, I wonder how much tears, if you were to measure during the reign or whatever you want to call it, of Adolf Hitler. We just had uh, a man accused of three Jews killed in a synagogue on their holy holiday. Passover. There's tears tonight over those lo uh, those people lost. Because they have not believed the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And there's tears being shed. Oh, that, that man, that rich man in hell, if he can only have tears to water his tongue. Thou makest us a strife unto our neighbor. God will bring your neighbors upon you because of your sin. Because of your rebellion. Because of your disobedience. And our enemies laugh among themselves. Now here are neighbors, nations around them. And then the enemies are looking at the situation. Ha ha ha. What about your great God? See, when you rebel against God and make God pass judgment and anger upon then you, then you make everyone look around and say, well, what's going on? What is this God? And it's not God. They blame God foolishly. As God told David when it came to that baby with Bathsheba, you have caused the heathen to uh, to mock me. And that's not the exact thing, but, you know, the heathen is speaking about it. That's why that baby had to die. Outright adultery, outright murder. And God's a holy and justice God. Turn us again. Well, you need to turn. You need to repent. You need to get right. O oh God of his, O oh God of hosts. And cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Again, that's a repeat. God is not going to shine his face and come upon you if you continue to sin. Matter of fact, you're going to get more and more distant from God. You need to repent and turn and get back to God. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt, Israel, in the book of Exodus. And forever you'll see that Jesus and, and, the, and the, the writers of the Bible will liken to a vineyard plant, a vine printed. And that is the nation of Israel. They are his fruit. Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. When God brought them in the land, he brought his people into the land and planted them. John 15, 1-7. A land that he gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jewish families. Hebrews. No Ishmael. None of the sons of Keturah. Jews. They were to wipe out all the nations that were in the land and they didn't do it. That was rebellion against God. That land was supposed to be a pure vine of only grapes. And yet, leaving those heathen in that land, they brought up filthy plants. They brought up sour grapes. They brought up all kinds of poison ivies and everything like that. And that is not what God had planned for that land. He brought in the choicest vine. Thou prepares room before it. And this cause it to take a deep root and fill the land, the land of Israel. They rooted down great and God made them grow. 
I don't think you could put a number on the Jews since Abraham today. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God said they would be as the sand in the seashore, as the stars in the heavens, without number. And they are stewing that land how many years? Since Joshua brought them in through the Jordan into Jericho. Listen, you can't even go over to Babylon, which is Iraq today, and find the original Babylonians. You can't find the original Romans in Rome. You can't find the, the original Greeks in Greece. Even America is running off the original Native Americans. With their probably their bloodline is dying. And you get the Mexicans and all that. They're fairly new people. They're not the originals. Only Israel is the original. And the room there is that entire land that God has given them. That's the room. And that room is filled today with Palestinians. It's filled with Arabians. It's filled with Roman Catholics. It's filled with atheists. It's filled with everyone but what God intended to be filled with. The hills were covered with a shadow of it. And the boughs thereof were like the goodly cedars. It's a, it's a fruitful, it's a blessing, it's a goodly tree, goodly vine land. Israel did not look like what Israel looks like today. Read the Bible. And look at the pictures of the place today. That is not how Israel looked. The Bible proclaims it's Israel as a land with flows with milk and honey, where there's all kinds of ore from the earth inside of it. There were there were valleys, there were uh, lilies, there were sycamore trees, there was there were cedar trees. It was all kinds of things in that land. That land was beautiful, but because of sin and rebellion, that's what the land looks like today. It says that today when we read the Bible that when when David went to go purchase Mount Moriah where the Temple Mount is, it says that a man was there plowing the fields with oxen. Well, I wonder if you go to Temple Mount today, I wonder if you can plow with the field with oxen. She sent out her bowels onto the sea, the Mediterranean. And her branches onto the river, the, the Jordan River. As far as east from the west, Israel spread it out. Why hast thou then broken down her hedges? Hedges is, is, is a border. It, it's wrapped around the property. It's a, you know, it's, it's a natural fence. And it's broken down. Everybody's coming. Like I said already, in Israel today, there's all religions. It's a cesspool of everybody in the world. The hedges have been broken down. There's no walls in Israel today. Or very few. But no walls like in the Old Testament where you have to go through a gate. And they have to check who you are. So that all they which pass by the way do pluck them. Pluck is to pick out. The Catholics have plucked themselves a territory. While the Arabians have picked themselves a territory. While the Palestinians have picked themselves a territory. While the United Nuts over there have picked themselves a territory. And what is really that land that belongs to Israel? Only by the Lord Jesus Christ coming back at the second advent can that land be totally clean of all that religion and nonsense. The boar out of the wood does waste it. That's an animal that comes in and, and feeds and devours and tramples. A wild beast of the field does devour, eats. Gentiles. Had Joshua and Judges and the land and the people of Israel 
Had they done everything God wanted them to do, that would be a holy land today. It would be a beautiful land today. It'd be marvelous. And they would be a lighthouse on top of a hill for all the world. But not so. Rebellion. They left some of these people in there, and they left some of these people in there, and they taxed some of these people, and they disobeyed God, and God got angry with them. Solomon, the, the, the second real king of the nation, because God really didn't honor Saul, he goes down to Egypt, picks up himself a bride that is not his race. And then he picks up all the other women of all the nations that don't belong there. And next thing you know, he's serving other gods. You know what the church is today? It is Solomon. She has an Egyptian bride. She has all kinds of heathen brides with heathen filthy practices that has defiled the life of the Christian. Return and born out of the wood and the wild beast has come into the church and has destroyed. How many churches are going to prepare themselves to have Easter eggs this weekend instead of the resurrection of Jesus Christ? How many churches are going to celebrate Easter and Easter is not the Bible holiday? Today is the holiday. It is called Passover. And we are to celebrate three days from today, three nights. I know it's not Sunday, but today is the Passover. We are to celebrate three days and three nights from now the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What is the church going to celebrate with Easter? Easter bunny, rabbits, fancy dress, flower, artificial flowers in a hat. Send your sperm out looking for eggs in the churchyard. <gasps> Would you say? Well, there's only one thing I know that goes searching for eggs. That's sperm. That's life. That's a sex worship. Found it all the way back to Babylon. Return, we beseech thee, O God. God didn't go nowhere. The moment you sin, God stopped. And God is waiting. God will let you go off. Read the book of uh, Pilgrim's Progress. When the times that, that, that uh, uh, Pilgrim goes off, God stayed exactly where he was when Pilgrim left. And God stayed there until Pilgrim got right and returned back to where God was. When Pilgrim lost his scroll, that scroll was right where he left it. God stayed right where he left the scroll. Pilgrim had to turn and re repent and get back and get to the scroll. And I have told you, I, I know him personally in my life, when I left God, God stayed right there and he waited for me to come all the way back around that stupid path of sin and stayed right there until I returned to where God I left God. God did not leave me. All I did was get more baggage. All I got was more wounds. All I got was more bruises. All I did was walk a whole lot more walk than what the Lord wanted me to walk. And it was a perverse walk that I didn't lose weight. I gained more weight by sin and burden. And when I come back to where the Lord is, I repent, and the Lord looks at me like, did you enjoy that? No, I didn't, Lord. Look down from heaven, behold, and visit this vine, Israel. Yeah, but can God look upon sin? The holy God? Though Proverbs said, the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold, the evil and the good. But he's saying, Lord, look upon us for good, and... You're sinning. Only when you repent and get right, then God will start moving those clouds and, and have fellowship with you. You can't have fellowship with Billy and you can't have fellowship with God. You can't have fellowship with the unfruitful 
works of unrighteousness and the, the fruits of righteousness, you cannot have fellowship with those that are unsaved and those that are saved. And then ask God to bless it. You can't say God bless America when America does not want God. We are wasting your breath. It's almost like feeding a dead baby. There's no use to it. And he does visit the vine. You through Ezra and Nehemiah, they bring he brings them back into the land and they sin. And the Lord Jesus Christ shows up. You know, Lord Jesus Christ shows up in that same temple that Ezra builds and walks among them. I know Herod changed it and redesigned it a few times, but that temple that Ezra did, the Lord Jesus Christ walks in there and he teaches in there and he's through the nations and they rejected him. Do you think the Lord's looking upon the vine now? He says, no. He says, I've cut off the branches. And I grafted in the, the Gentiles. And any individual Jew that will acknowledge with his heart and believe with his heart that God has, has saved him, that he confesses with his mouth the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, all right, that Jew will get grafted into that vine. But as a nation, no. And as a nation for what they've done for the Lord Jesus Christ and what they did to Jesus Christ, they are going to suffer seven years called Jacob's trouble. The rod of God as a chastisement for what they've done to their father God. Then he'll look upon them as he comes back in anger and gets rid of the heathen, gets rid of the wicked, cleans up this earth, and then a thousand year reign in Jerusalem. With the twelve apostles sitting around him. With all the Christians that serve the Lord. And earn crowns. That earn the right to reign with him. It's not something given to you. you got to earn that reign. Not salvation. The reign. As we are all over the world. And I imagine one of them coming. Judge not me. She be judge. Moron. And the vineyard which thy right hand has planted. Well, the Bible says the Lord Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God. God took that plant from Egypt and he planted it in the land of Israel. If you can only walk... Listen, if I had the opportunity to stand before the United Nuts in New York City, I would preach two messages to all the congregation. Number one, you need to be saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, that land is Israel. Leave it alone! And we Christians are told by Paul, we are to pray for the peace of Israel. And God says, there is no peace, saith the, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. So the only way they're going to get that peace is Jesus Christ being in Jerusalem. And Jesus said in the book in the Gospel of John, that I give you my peace, not as the world giveth it. The world will sign a peace treaty and then break it three seconds later. And the branch. Doesn't Zach, I think it's Zachariah speaks about the branch, Jesus Christ. That thou madest strong for thyself. Well, look at that. There's the Lord Jesus Christ in Psalm 80, verse 15. The strongest one in all the world is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he's the only one that can conquer sin. He's the only one that can conquer death. He's the only one that can conquer Satan. I can't. Even Michael, the, the, the archangel, when he went to go pick up Moses' body, Satan showed up and he's like, listen, I just rebuke you in the name of the Lord. God told me to come and do this. I have no power out of you, so just please, just leave me alone. Let me do what I have to do. It is burnt with fire. And that is the picture at the end of Second Chronicles. The place is destroyed. It is burnt with fire. There is not even a stone on top of the stone. All the good stuff has been brought to Babylon. The Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat has been quote unquote raptured to heaven. 
and is never seen again until Revelation says that he's beheld and there was the ark. It is cut down. It's cut down today. It's burned with fire. They only got of all the city that you know you have in the back of your Bible, some Bibles, you have that's the walls of, of the city laid out, and they tell you that this is David's area, this is the pool and all that. And uh, today you go over there and the only real wall they talk about is the Wellman Wall. That city is not what it was like in the day of, of Jesus. 70 AD, Titus came in there and wiped out the whole city. And it's not been the same. Why? Because they rejected what God told them. Don't rebel against God. Because you're in mighty big trouble. And as a born again Christian, you can be saved and you won't lose your salvation, but you can lose a lot of things. As I said already, as far as the fellowship with God, when you declare to sin, God will stay right there. He ain't going to walk with you. You lose that fellowship and you lose that help. It is cut down, they perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. God will destroy a city. Rebuke. Rebuke. That means you've done wrong. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand. Let, the ha let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand. Upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. Now who is that? Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand. And so forever since Genesis 1 to Psalms 80, I have been saying that God's right hand, that Jesus Christ is seated there today, according to Stephen, he stood up. That right hand of God is Jesus Christ. There it is in Psalms 80, verse 17. You think I've been full of it? I speak scripture with scripture. Why does it say the Catholic version? And let thy hand be upon the woman of thy right hand. Upon Mary, the son of, you know, the, you know, it don't say Mary. It don't say woman. You know, you got two chances of, of, of picking who's to be on the right hand of God, male or female. And look at the expression, the son of man. Scripture with scripture tells you who exactly who that is. I forget, I think it's Mark's gospel that uses the Son of Man. I believe it is, I may be wrong about that one, but I believe it's Mark that says the Son of Man. There's Jesus Christ right there. I can't find Jesus in this Old Testament. Open your eyes. Repent and get right. So we, so will, excuse me, so will not we go back from thee. And they did when Jesus Christ came. They ordered and said what they said to Samuel. We want a king just like the nations, but we want Caesar. They didn't learn nothing, did they? You realize what happened in Samuel's time happened in Jesus' time. We want that king rather than God. What was the choice to be with Samuel? Was it God or a man? Yes. But we want a king. We want to be like the nation. What was the choice in Jesus' time? We want God or we want man? We want Caesar. So we, so I keep on saying we, so will not we go back from thee? 
You know the only way that those Jews will not turn from God again is when Jesus Christ takes full power. That the Bible speaks about he's got to put into them and create a new heart in them and give them a new spirit. God ain't God is not done with that Jew. He's angry with him, but he ain't do, done with him. Now there are some Jews that have gone to hell or will go to hell, but as a nation, he is not done with them. Quicken us. That means that means to make alive. We're dead in trespasses and sin. That's what he's saying. And we will call upon thy name. Why does it say call upon thee? Why does it not say call upon the Lord God? Why does it say name? Why did the Holy Spirit put the word name there? Because there's a name above all names. There's a name that every knee shall bow and every knee shall confess. That name is Jesus Christ. Jehovah saves. There's going to be a day when Jews will call upon Jesus. And no other name. They've been called upon Baal, Ashtoreth, and everybody else in the Old Testament. One day will be no longer. be only at the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Savior. They will have the same Messiah that died and bled for us that we believe in. Turn us again, O Lord of hosts. Cause thy face to shine, and we shall be saved. Well, again, at the second advent, Lord Jesus Christ, when he comes and he picks up the Jews, probably sail of Petra, and brings them into the land, as he gets rid of all those that have been against him. Then the Jews will be that light. Jerusalem will be that light, and the Jews will be his people. After seven years of kicking their butt with a with a with a paddle, calamity becomes because we have sinned against God, not that God has sinned against us. God will never leave us. Just. Oh, I don't want to be with him no more. When you read the, the story of the prodigal son, who saw who first in the midst of the story? The father saw the son coming. The father is more anxious to see you coming home. Home! Did the father leave his house? While the son went and had his adulterous affairs and wasted his money? No! The father stayed where the son left. The son had to come home. What did the son come home with? Maybe a few babies. No money. Skinnier than ever. No shoes. No ring. He came home with a bunch of burdens and a lot of loss. And there's the father still waiting for him. And the father did not go get him. But oh boy, when he saw that son coming up the driveway, maybe up the road, then turn us again, O oh Lord, on the host, cause that face to shine. I bet you that father's face shine. Here comes my son, that dirty, filthy. And the son comes up to him and says, Father, I have sinned against thee. I see no more dirt. Bring the fatted calf, bring the shoes, bring the ring. And you know what? There was a party, and in the book of Luke, that party never ended. Finally, where it says the party ended. Yeah, the brother got upset, but the party was still going on. And we shall be, we shall be saved. That son was saved for all eternity. He never did get cast out again. That's how that story ends in the prodigal son. 
You know, the, the coin that was lost and it was found and it was rejoicing. That one sheep that was lost and was found and it was rejoicing. God rejoices when we come back to Him. We please God when we turn from our sins and get right. And walk with Him and remain where He wants us to remain. And walk when He wants us to walk. And when we see that clouded pillar during the day, if it moves, we move. If it's a fire by night, if it moves, we move. And if it buys, if it stays, we stay. That's how we please God. That is the will of God that we stay with Him. We stay out of calamity when we do what God wants us to do. And then when we apply 1 John 1, 9 in our lives, we plead the blood and repent and get right. That's what pleases God. Oh, Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art.